Hi everybody, Matt Ruddick from Model Aviation Magazine here with our Editor-in-Chief, Jay Smith. Jay, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Matt. Uh, we've got to ask you some questions about charging and chargers in general. And the first thing I want to ask is the ins and outs of charging. Why, why is this something important that we need to know about? Well, if you're going to deal with electric power systems, obviously then you're going to have to deal with charging batteries. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously we want to do that in a safe manner. So it's important to understand the functionality of your charger, especially if you have a charger like we have here that has an LCD readout and has you know additional functionality like um, you can change your voltage and your charge settings and whatnot. So you want to be able to you know take a battery and look at the label on the battery and be able to program it into your charger because mm -hmm. obviously we don't want to mischarge the battery because mischarging the battery then could lead to either it expelling gases or possibly a fire. So it's important. One thing that I've noticed is with uh, ready to fly packs versus going out and buying my own charger. Uh, the chargers that come with the ready-to-fly uh, packages are a little bit different, are they not? Yes, yeah, so you know, generally speaking, to keep the cost low, they give you uh, a basic charger that allows you, obviously, to charge your battery, but it probably is not going to provide you any other functionality. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it may plug into a cigarette lighter, it may plug into the wall, it may have alligator plugs that you can connect on a battery, mm -hmm. um, but it's not going to give you a readout, it's not going to allow you to storage charge, it's not going to show you the balance state. Uh, so obviously, uh, they they you know serve the purpose of charging your battery but if you want to know a little bit more information you know uh, an upgraded charger with an LCD readout screen is going to give you you know at a glance what's going on with your battery as far as the charge cycle how how far along it is charged the voltages uh, of each individual cell mm -hmm. and the balance state so you're just going to get a lot more information uh, most chargers now also have uh, like we talked about a storage charge and we talked about that in the article mm -hmm. uh, so you can you know discharge your cells or charge them if they're if they need charge to get them to that point so that they uh, last a lot longer your batteries will be happier and you'll get more uh, life out of them that way so I would say that it's probably your recommendation that if you're going to be doing a lot of charging and discharging your batteries, you're probably better off to try to buy something that's third party that gives you this kind of extra information. Do you think that's a safe set, a safe bet? Yes. I mean, there's a lot of uh, chargers out there, a lot of manufacturers out there that make chargers. Sure. Um, so, you know, obviously you need to think about what your needs are, exactly. whether you want a charger that charges one battery at a time like this one, or you want a multi-port charger that might charge two, three, four, even six batteries at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to think about the size of the batteries you're charging. Um, you also want to think about like this charger is an AC DC charger so it has its power supply built in some chargers are DC chargers so if you want to use those indoors uh, you need a power supply like we have here which allows you to plug the charger into that and that provides your power so this is this is a big guy this is a big box right here um, can you explain a little bit more about what something like this is for because I, I understand the difference between AC and DC power but when it comes to these chargers is, is one better than the other well, generally speaking, um, built-in chargers might have a little bit more in, as far as limitations because, I mean, you know, it's fairly compact. The, obviously, the power supply on this charger is nowhere near the power supply we have here. Right. So depending on uh, the requirements of the charger, how much you're drawing, depending on the size of the packs you're, you're charging, uh, you know, you might, you'll find that some of the larger chargers, larger capacity chargers, require... Uh, a separate power supply. So, and this power supply has several connections on the front, so you could connect, uh, you know, even more than one charger, depending on, you know, again, just want to make sure we're not going over uh, the, the draw that mm -hmm. the, the power supply. Yeah, I even supply. I even saw this guy had a USB port on it. Too, yes, yes. Which I found quite interesting. I like that. We actually used this power supply at my charity event, Nefi, mm -hmm. and we set it up, and, and several people charge on it at one time. Wow. Um, you know, five or six chargers at times we've had going and haven't had any problems whatsoever. We've used it for six years. Awesome. Well, uh, you mentioned something about multi-chargers, or multi-port chargers, and we've got one right here. This is one from, uh, from eFlight. Uh, what are the, what's the advantage of going a route like this versus just charging them one at a time? I, I would think one at a time might be a little bit safer, but uh, maybe there's an advantage to one of these. Well, uh, depending on how often you fly and you know the number of batteries you have, obviously if you're using like this a, a single port charger and it takes you, depending on the state of your battery, you know 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Uh, maybe an hour, probably tops, to charge your battery, uh, and you have four or six batteries you want to charge, that's four or six hours. If you have a charger that has two ports or four ports, then, you know, 
you can conceivably charge however many ports you have. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing with multi-port chargers typically is that the amount of output per um, each, uh, so if it's a two port or four port, each port is probably not gonna have quite as much output as a single port charger because mm -hmm. they share right. the, the power. So, so it may take a little bit longer to charge each cell. Well, uh, you just wanna theory. make sure that the batteries that you have, um, the charger, you know, if you use the multi-ports that, that you're able to supply it. So if you're using right. like a three cell 2100, three cell, you know, 1300, that won't be a problem at all. But if you're trying to charge six, six cell 5000s, right. that might be a problem. But, sure. but ultimately, um, it just, you know, it quickens the, the charge process. Um, so multi-port chargers do that. They also have uh, boards that you can use, like with this charger, and you can use a board where it'll allow you to to plug in more than one battery. So you'd say I wanted to charge two 2200 batteries, I could plug both batteries into the board, and then instead of charging at 2.2 mm -hmm. amps, I would charge at 4.4 amps, and it would split it between the two. Gotcha. So there's a, there's a way to do that too, even if you only have a single port. But you know, going back to what we talked about in the very beginning, if you're gonna do that, it's fine, but you need to make sure you understand the precautions, the safety, and how it works so that you charge at the appropriate charge rates. And that first starts with the battery. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if you take any battery and you're going to look at it and see, you know, what's the voltage of the battery, what's the capacity of the battery, and use that as parameters mm -hmm. to set your charger. So as long as you're following that, you know, you're going to be in good shape. Sounds good. So uh, one thing that I know you've mentioned already today and I've, and I've seen a lot about is balance charging. Mm -hmm. Explain to us balanced charging and why that's so important to make sure that you've got something that can charge in a balanced fashion across all your cells. Sure. So in this pack here, uh, it has three cells. You can't really see them because of the wrap. But so there's three individual cells making up this pack. So basically what balanced charging does is it makes sure that all three cells are pretty much at the exact same voltage because what can happen over time is the, the cells can be mismatched and one can be quite low and one can be quite high and if you don't match them then what can happen is one of the high cell can get overcharged. It can be taken beyond the uh, the, the normal level mm -hmm. that you'd want to charge it to. So what the what the balancer does normally is it discharges the high cell until it brings them all in line so that they're all uh, within a very, very close tolerance uh, in voltages. So uh, we recommend that you do it every charge to keep your ba your battery in that state. Now it will take just slightly longer than if you didn't use it because sure. again, it's discharging the higher cells, but uh, by doing that, you're gonna get more longevity out of your battery. And, and it's safer because again, if they get, if they get too far apart, then you run the risk of, of sure. overcharging or you run the risk of discharging one of the cells too low mm -hmm. uh, when you're flying it because your your cutoff in your ESC is looking at the overall pack voltage. It's not looking at, at each just individual one cell. cell. Yes. Right. Well, uh, something else you talked about was a storage charge. And this is something that I've never really thought much about um, when you know I deal with like my cell phone batteries or batteries and, and other electronic devices. But when you're talking about in LiPos, there's a storage charge that it's recommended you keep your batteries at when you're not going to be using them for a long period of time. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's so basically the storage charge that's recommended for LiPo batteries is half, roughly half the capacity, somewhere in the neighborhood of 3.8 to 3.9 volts uh, per cell. And uh, basically what it does is it allows the battery uh, to last longer. Um, if you're, so basically if you charge your, fully charge your battery, if you plan to fly within a week, you're okay. If you're not gonna fly within a week, it's recommended that you, that you balance charge. And the good thing is many chargers now have that as a setting. So when you scroll through your charge and discharge settings, there's a setting that says storage. And so you just pick storage and you put in the capacity of the battery and the voltage uh, you know, because of the number of cells, and it'll automatically do it for you, and that's mm -hmm. just going to give you longevity. You know, because theoretically, um, you know, uh, there's differing opinions, but you know, you could lose possibly 20% of your capacity over time if you wow. if you store them fully charged. And especially if you're not going to, if you don't know that that 20% may be gone, you get up in the air with that particular battery, you could, I mean, run into a lot of problems. Well, very cool. Well, Jay, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to stop by and talking to us a little bit about chargers. If you want to learn more about charging and charging safety, we've got an article in our Battery Basics series in the September issue of Model Aviation Magazine. Be sure to check that out. And thank you guys so much for joining us. For Jay Smith, our Editor-in-Chief, I'm Matt Ruddick from Model Aviation Magazine. We'll see you next time.